A phrase train. We are doing um, using natural language processing to try to improve search on the web. This is very hard, but we're doing it in a special way. We're using user aggregation to create the natural language processing. Now, of course, natural language processing ultimately stems from linguistics. It's based a lot on the work of this guy, Noam Chomsky. He's famous primarily for creating a view of natural language grammars, which can be represented by um, formal rule systems. And um, so, uh, so, like this, uh, essentially, formal rule system can, in a sense, be looked at as a as um, a set of algorithms for creating these trees like this, uh, descriptions of syntactic structures of sentences. So um, since uh, Chomsky proposed this kind of view of grammar, people decided, okay, well, we should try to um, analyze language using computers. Computers are really good at formal systems, and they faced problems like, for example, structural ambiguity, where a si single sentence can have more than one interpretation. Depicted here, they use fancy algorithms to try to solve problems like that. Okay, so thanks to um, this fellow, Alan Turing, we often associate natural language processing with artificial intelligence. He proposed that uh, a program, an a computer program, could prove itself intelligent by fooling people into believing it's human by using language just that well. So there's a pessimistic view of this kind of articulate artificial intelligence. Some of you may recognize this as Hal from uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, who is a very articulate and homicidal artificial intelligence. There's also um, a somewhat more sentimentalized version of uh, artificial intelligence represented by characters like C3 um, a subservient, charming um, android who speaks with a British accent. Um, and this is kind of uh, how people like to think about what natural language processing could be. Um, and of course, there's a um, search engine version of uh, C3PO, which is asked, was it Jeeves? Jeeves was the mascot for um, what was pitched originally as a natural language processing search engine where you could ask a natural language query, get a, get a response, just like you're talking to a person. Didn't work quite that well, though. This slide that sp shows the special genius of Jeeves gives you a sense of how natural language processing programs have been pitched to people. Um, essentially, they're more intelligent than you are. So, you know, so here's Jeeves' brain, here's your brain right here. Jeeves is smarter than you. Um, this can create a certain amount of resentment. So, here's a, here's a more recent target of this kind of resentment. This is Ms. Dewey. I don't know how many of you have seen her, but she's, she's very annoying and she, um, she exhibits a lot of uh, uh, um, annoyance at, uh, if you take too long to do a query or something. So, NLP has been treated as this kind of magical um, face uh, interface that is supposed to inspire awe in people's hearts. Kind of like the Wizard of Oz here. A lot of copyright violations in this talk, by the way. But, um, uh, of course, ultimately the man behind the curtain is, is revealed, uh, the bumbling man making mistakes. People are disappointed um, uh, after the great hype uh, with which natural language processing was presented to them. Uh, all right. So they begin to feel like natural language processing is a little bit less like a, a magical wizard and a little bit more like a, a shell game or a scam. And they, the users are the losers. Um, so people have had a lot of disappointment in NLP programs. Now, um, what we're trying to do, we're trying to um, cut through some of the hype of natural language processing, return to more humble roots. This is James Murray, the editor of the Oxford English Dictionary. You'll see that he worked with large teams of people to collect a lot of idiosyncratic facts about English, the words, etymologies, and the context they current. Now, if you really get into the nitty gritty of the idiosyncratic facts about language, you learn, for example, that words have a lot of meanings. Here's one word, C, and this is from the Visual Thesaurus, a really cool tool representing a lot of all the different meanings of the word C. This is all idiosyncratic stuff you have to know about language. So a guy like Tim O'Reilly might say, natural language is a little bit like infoware. That is, it's a lot of data or a lot of information and just a little bit of program. This is kind of different from the more traditional algorithmic approach that was taken earlier in NLP. Now, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of the details of language, you have to start looking at the conceptual structures that underlie words and the kind of context they occur in. This is a representation of, I can't go over it, but it's from the FrameNet project, which is trying to um, collect this kind of information. You can't really represent the concepts, though. Seriously, it's very, very hard to do real NLP. They collect um, sentences, they identify words that identify these kind of conceptual frames, and then they identify the phrases that fill, sort of fill in the roles that are introduced by those words. Um, now, phrase train is basically an attempt to cut through the hype, pull back the curtain from NLP, say, okay, NLP is really, um, the, the genius of language is really people. And uh, natural language processing applications are not magical things. They're a little bit more like charming old contraptions like this, hence phrase train. So if, you have, if you're curious about this, if you have any questions about it, visit the phrase train website. You can read a little bit about it there. There's a link to my log. You can read more about what we're doing. Thank you very much.